Easily one of the biggest complaints of all electric vehicles right now is the performance and the range of their batteries. Now, hopefully this is a temporary issue and in our lifetime, as battery technology gets better, this will completely solve itself and potentially become a major selling point of electric vehicles. But as it stands right now, the energy density, charging speeds, even degradation over time is a real issue. But even so, there are some things you can do to help mitigate some of these issues and get the most out of your current generation battery. So I went ahead and made a tangible list of all the things you can realistically do to accomplish this. And it begins with addressing battery degradation and the best practices around this. So when it comes to lithium ion batteries, remember that they prefer the same temperature range as we do. So by exposing the battery to prolonged extreme heat as well as freezing temperatures, this can negatively affect the battery cells and reduce their performance. Now exposing a battery to extreme temperatures one time isn't going to be fatal. It's just something you want to be aware of and minimize as much as possible. And this goes double for when you actually charge the battery. Then the temperature range to avoid accumulating damage over time is even more crucial. And speaking of charging, there is an ideal range to keep your battery. And that's between 80 and 20% charge. Now, similarly to the temperature situation, Occasionally charging to 100%, it's fine, but I would try and avoid ever draining the battery to zero if possible. Now this is so vital that most batteries shut off before they completely die. So for instance, your bike might shut off and quote unquote die when it still has say 5% battery actually remaining. And if this does happen to you, I would recommend immediately putting some charge back into the battery. And this is because phantom drain is a thing, the battery can still discharge slowly over over time, and if it does truly go to zero, that can cause lasting damage, and some cells might not even be able to recharge at that point. So definitely don't leave a battery dead for any prolonged period of time. Now speaking of charge state and prolonged period of time, in the event that you don't use your bike for a while and the battery ends up sitting, the common advice here is to keep the charge at roughly 50%. And again, this just helps to reduce the strain on each individual cell. And just remember that due to the phantom drain, you should check on your battery once every month or two to make sure it's still at the appropriate charge level. And the last point on battery degradation is charging speed. If possible, the optimal way to charge your battery is as slowly as possible. Fast charging is way more convenient and if need be, it's completely fine to do, but a fast charge does warm up the battery more than a slow charge, adding to the stress and the wear over time. Now, from my experience, I noticed that e-bike batteries tend to begin to show signs of degradation after their first year. I usually don't notice any drop off before this point, but after this point, it can be rather quick, especially for cheaper, lower quality batteries. And in terms of lost range, we're usually talking about one, two, maybe even three miles of lost range. So doing what's possible to keep your battery healthy, it's certainly worth doing. All right, the next category affecting range is riding technique. And I say technique because it really is a learned behavior that can yield greater range range if done correctly. And the general principle to increase riding efficiency is to preserve momentum whenever possible. And when you do need to slow down, regen braking is going to be the best way of doing that. However, don't over rely on regen braking. Coasting down a street using a minimal throttle is always going to be more efficient than more sporadic acceleration and braking, even if you're utilizing regen braking. Now, I quickly want to touch on hills and how to approach this because traveling up an incline is probably the quickest way to deplete a battery and just kill your final range figures. So to help mitigate this, I did find that if you simply reduce your speed when traveling up an incline versus your normal cruising speed by something like five miles per hour, that can significantly reduce the power draw and the impact on your final range. So if you can, if it's safe to do so, I definitely recommend slowing down when traveling up a hill. And then of course on the downhill, I recommend the previous advice of maintaining momentum and using regen whenever possible. And on the topic of speed when it comes to normal riding, I found this chart on the most efficient speed to travel given different motor types. So if you're looking to truly maximize your range, these speeds are what you want to be following. And quickly, we do have some other miscellaneous things. Uh, one is pedaling. 
Of course, with an e-bike, you can pedal and take some of the load off of the motor. Just be aware that human pedaling at most is gonna give you about 150 additional watts. And by simply slowing down a little bit, you can save often much more power. Also weight makes a big impact on range. So you're gonna to want to reduce that whenever you can. Remember to check your tire pressure. You wanna keep this at an optimal level. If you can, a spare battery can be a good investment. And you could also get this adapter. This lets you charge an e-bike at almost every public level two EV charger. I just made a review on this adapter. So definitely check out that video if this sounds interesting. So given the current state of battery technology, that is what you can do to maximize your e-bike range. And here's everything together on a chart if you guys want to take a screenshot and save it. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.